Hey there, what is up? It is good to be back. I can't believe it's taken me this long to finally do a virtual strategy guide walkthrough love letter, if you will, about Dragon's Lair, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Of course, I'm going to do a real walkthrough and playthrough of the game in real time, but I want this to be more than just a way to tell you how to complete the game. I mean, sure, for people like this guy, I mean, why doesn't this guy just get to the point? Why does he need to do all this talking? I just want the moves to be able to be Dragon's Lair and impress some girls so I can finally make something of myself. So again, don't worry. I'll put a link in the description and a card up here somewhere if cards are still a thing here in YouTube. It has been a while. And it'll be a no frills walkthrough where if you do just want step by step, these are the moves for this level. Um, this is the way you'd want to go is look at that video. I mean, yes, I may have a borderline unhealthy obsession with this game, and I definitely have plenty of memorabilia than you would expect for a supposedly mature adult male. But at the same time, if you want the full-on experience with little nuances as far as proper timing and a little storytelling along the way of the experiences I've had with it, then I really think you'll enjoy this video, and I hope you guys can just feel the passion and love I have for this game coming through. All right, so let's start the playthrough. Remember, this is just going to be a straightforward playthrough. I'm just casually playing through a game while I'm recording it here, so I may not be perfect. I'm sure there will be times that I die, but I just have it set up to where I can do like a real deal full playthrough for you guys to experience. And you can see all the hand movements and the proper timing, so you can help get a better understanding of how to complete the game. If there is something that you need to fine tune, that's when you can refer to the other video that we have in the description and the card to help you get a little more precise visuals, hand movements, and background sounds for the sound effects or music in the game to help you time everything better. And again, this was just a standard casual playthrough that I did. It's not perfect. I mean, it's really hard for me to grasp how influential this game has been to me in both video games, life in general. I mean, I may just be weird, but I somehow relate this game to so many aspects of my life and I have so many memories tied to it. It is strange, but for some reason, this game has always hit home with me and I just hope you can appreciate it as much as I do. I think I've showed a few things on some previous videos about like where I did some artwork during junior high related to Dragon's Lair, how I was obsessed with going through this old Sega CD secrets manual that really got me into actually knowing all the moves and obsessively playing the game. It was definitely a anxiety and stress outlet for me during school. Uh, it's just one of those games like playing an old movie that I always loved to watch. I felt like I was more in tune with it where I could actually control it a little bit as opposed to just mindlessly watching a movie. So, I mean, that's what I liked about it. Although I think that's what drives a lot of people crazy with these quick time event games or FMV games, but I love it. And it seems like most of the levels, especially the more difficult ones, were played through during this round. But there are some rooms that I didn't have to complete in order to make it to the Dragon's Lair during this round. And if there was a level that wasn't covered here, just hit me up in the comments section and I definitely can help you out because I do know how to get through any level. And I'll also in the description put a full master moveset list for each room. And Dragon's Lair is definitely one of those games that there's tons of trial and error. And according to the different version that you have, there will be various little nuances and differences as opposed to other versions. I know like in the Sega CD version, some of the moves in the final level with Sands the Dragon are different than what I had to do to get it through my arcade version. So that's just stuff you got to play with. But if you have a general idea of the move set to make it through the level, then you'll be fine.
I think one of the key elements that triggers so much nostalgia for me with this game is that I link this to my first ever arcade experience. It's definitely deeply rooted in Dragon's Lair. I mean, I don't know exactly how old I was. I would say I was probably four or five years old. So that would be around 1986 to 1988. But my family and I were over at my cousin's house in Virginia and we were at their local mall. Uh, and our parents kind of went to Kmart and was doing some shopping. So we went to the local arcade there in the mall. And it's the first experience I really have that dank, dark, 80s classic arcade that you kind of think of uh, stereotypically. But I remember going in there for the first time. It kind of reminded me of those old gold mine type arcades. Everything was kind of barricaded off. It was a lot of wood and like that brown stone at the front, those gold mine arcades, if you can remember those. But what I remember is just like that kind of smoky. It was a little bit scary, but I had my older teenage cousins with me to kind of help guide me around in there. I can still hear all the sounds of the other games going like crazy. The people kind of walking around. It was a little bit scary, like I said, but I remember vividly seeing this one cabinet that had the dragon on the side. And I remember when I saw the cabinet, I was too small to fully see the top of the screen. I could see the top edge and I could see, man, that looks, that looks like a cartoon. So, I mean, I had to eventually have somebody there get me a bucket to stand on. So imagine, if you will, a little mullet boy trying to get his way up onto a bucket to look at this game. I mean, I was little, so I didn't really know what to do with the game, and it was just like I was watching a cartoon, but there was a joystick there, there were buttons to push. Obviously, you controlled this, and this looked like a real cartoon movie. I mean, I was mesmerized. And this is before I knew all the hype that was around Dragon's Lair because Dragon's Lair, I think, originally came out in 1983 and I would have only been a year old at the time. So I definitely didn't get to experience the real frenzy they had when it first came out. What I think that was like the first game that ever used two quarters to play. And they would stack an additional TV on top of the arcade cabinet so people that were waiting in line could watch other people play. I mean, this game had real hype behind it. I didn't get to experience that. And I probably didn't actually see the cabinet again for another 10 or 20 years. But when I was in the seventh grade, I had a Sega CD at that point, And I was really into the FMV games. And I think it was at a store kind of like a Babbage's or something like that where I found a used copy of Dragon's Lair on the Sega CD. And I noticed the artwork when I saw it. I was like, oh, that's that game I saw in the arcade all those years ago. I didn't remember how much it was, but I can see why I bought it now because it was pretty cheap uh, because I still have my original case. I lost my original artwork a long time ago. I think I accidentally forgot to bring it home from school when I drew Dirk the Daring and the Lizard King on those art projects. So I don't have my original Sega CD manual, but I still have my original Sega CD case and it has the partially torn price tag still on it and it looks like it was $12.37. So that's pretty cool. And by the way, if you are a big Dragon's Lair fan and happen to run across a Dragon's Lair on Blu-ray, definitely pick it up. It is one of my most prized possessions in my media collection.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe it's a way that you can experience Dragon's Lair if you never got to back in the arcade days or if you just happen to not be as fortunate as me that I have a Dragon's Lair arcade cabinet. This is my Holy Grail cabinet that my wife was so awesome to surprise me with a couple of Christmases ago, I think. I mean, she knew I always wanted this and she is very amazing and I definitely got to give her a nice shout out for that. You are awesome, honey. But again, if you need the no frills walkthrough, go to the link in the description or the card that we provided. And until next time, G3 out.